The Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. EliteForm.com, IgnitionAPG.com, PlayUSA at PLAEUSA.com, and Soranex Exercise Equipment at Soranex.com. And now, the Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast. Welcome to Iron Game Chalk Talk with your host, Ron McKeever. Every time our athletes walk into this weight room, they're going to be pushed to the max. Let's go! Let's go! Everything you got! On this podcast, hear Coach McKeever's straight talk about training, featuring the top strength and conditioning professionals from around the world. And now, here's your host, Ron McKeever. Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. I'm your host, Ron McKeefree, and this is episode number 188. Real excited to have a buddy of mine, Gus Felder, on the show today. Gus is the head strength coach at the U, the University of Miami, and I've been working to try to get him on the show for quite some time. His first year there at the U, and uh, just real busy and and the whole deal, but we finally got it pulled off, and uh, it was well worth the wait, man. We just had a great conversation uh, we talked about a lot of things. You know, we talked about you know variety in training. We talked about him hiring one of our mentors as an assistant. You know, one of his mentors as an assistant. Uh, talked about you know uh, rallying a team, getting a team to buy into you, especially in a situation where um, you know the, the alumni are, are really actively involved and, and and there was a great relationship with the coach before and the whole deal. And so. Uh, lots of great takeaways in this episode. We talk about his faith, which I think if you know if you follow Gus, you know um, quite a bit about and how, how much he, he makes his faith a part of his coaching and um, just a, just a fantastic conversation. So I, I know you're going to get a ton out of this. Before we do though, I want to make sure we recognize our sponsor for the show, Elite Form. Elite Form uh, again. This is the last episode that they'll be a sponsor of our game, Chalk Talk. Uh, just with what we have going on and what they have going on for 2017, it, it just didn't fit. But they are a first-class company. They have a first-class product. And, and more importantly, they're they're fantastic people. And so I would encourage you to continue to follow Lead Form, uh, what they have going on, their innovations. I think, again, they're a company that just they do it the right way. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they, they just, you know, they're constantly pushing the envelope. And, and that's what I love about them. And so... Uh, continue to follow them, thank them, reach out to them on social media, let them know how much you appreciate them being a part of everything, and um, really appreciate all everything they've done for our game. Chalk Talk, appreciate everything they've done for me. And so, want to get to this episode with Gus, sit back and enjoy, and we'll see you on the other side. All right, guys, super excited to have Gus Felder with us. Gus is on the other side here. We've been trying to do this for a while now, Gus, haven't we? Oh, yeah, man. It's been a <laughs> journey we got together. I tell you what, trying to pin down two busy guys is not an easy task. But man, I appreciate you being on the show and uh, just thank the world of you and the job you're doing, and, and really appreciate you coming on, man. As I just when you asked me back at the clinic to see us last year, and been looking forward to it. Uh, it was a great bit, like I said, almost coming up maybe a year, but looking forward to it and fired up that you got me on there, man. Just to share, blessing the weekend right now. Awesome, man. Well, let's 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 dig into it a little bit. I mean, let's go back to you know Penn State days. Let's let's talk about kind of you know just Reader's Digest version. What got you into strength and conditioning, and kind of what's the journey been to get there to Miami? All right. Well, let me take it back a little earlier. You know, of course, I'm a Penn State graduate, but what got me into strength and conditioning was my days at Burke High School in Burke, Pennsylvania. My high school coach at George Curry. Uh, uh, you know, rest in peace. He passed away this past this past year. Um, but it's him and his son, Kyle Curry, two of our coaches. Uh, Kyle was our strength coach, and young guys always in the weight room, always there. Just just the the impact and relationships that I built with those guys, and they'll end up doing Cosmos video, high school uh, strength and conditioning video, um, doing all the movements, all the Olympic movements, and all the powerlifting things that he had going in this video, and then uh, that kind of sparked a uh, sparked a little fuel in me uh, with strength and conditioning. And again, got a chance to go up to Penn State and uh, and, and coach under uh, work under well play under John Thomas at the time. You know, my, our first. Uh, you know, actually, my very first coach I actually met was my first workout with JT at 6 a.m. in the morning. It's a freshman, <laughs> 1998, summer 1998. You know, I was uh, two minutes late, you know, which I thought I was on time, but two minutes <laughs> late, and we got into it. And, and, and 
and uh, he's been my guy since. But that, that kind of sparked it for me, just the impact that I had from my high school coach at, at, uh, at Burr, Pennsylvania, just the, time, the amount of time they spent in teaching me how to work. Because I was always in the boxing um, as a young kid and, and, and never lived waste until I got to Burr, Pennsylvania. And then just watching my body change and watching, you know, uh, 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 how much stronger I'm getting, watching some of my team like Manny Henry. Uh, you know, I had a news camera coming to have him bench 500 pounds in high school and go off to Bloomberg. And that kind of sparked it, man, just being in the weight room, the smell of it. Um, uh, you know, just went down to Celebration High, Celebration high School in Florida, just walking through that weight room, just brought back some of the memories, just dialed in. So that's how it all started back in Burke, Pennsylvania. And uh, going up to Penn State, ended up graduating Penn State, Penn State uh, got in kinesiology while I was there. Uh, uh, ended up earning my master's in, in health education as well, education as well, uh, during my time at Penn State. Um, was able, uh, when I got done, during my, I graduated in four years, so I had a fifth year eligibility left. So during that time of grad student, I was able to intern for JT uh, and be a football player. Mm -hmm. So I was interning away from with John Thomas, and uh, I would intern away from all day clean and, and, and learn and take notes and spot some guys and spot my own teammates, coach my own teammates up, and then go off to practice at 2.30. <laughs> so... Uh, that, that was a real big year for me, um, uh, just diving in and being able to work at that level so early on. Uh, uh, and then from there, you know, once I got done playing, I had a chance to go to the Browns a little bit, working with uh, Buddy Morris, uh, the Cleveland Browns as my strength coach there and doing all the West Side Barbell things. And then that's when I really started to learn so many different ways of training, you know, especially talking with those guys. And, you know, Buddy is just so, so informative when you talk to him, you know, uh, um, you know, and, and, and makes you want to go study more once you finish talking to them. So scientifically speaking, uh, but just just once I, I you know go from high intensity, you know, going from high school to powerlifting, you know, a little bit of going to uh, John Thomas to high intensity, going back to Buddy Morris uh, with the West Side Barbells at the time he was doing, and I was just like a, a sponge and a student, just wanting to learn more and more, and uh, uh, and that kind of. You know, really, 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 really sparked the fire. Wanted to get into the strength and conditioning and learn, you know, learn the impact that you know strength coaches had on student athletes at the time. That was huge for me. So, you know, once I got, you know, got that done with the Browns, I went back to Penn State again uh, with John Thomas again um, until you know, and, and until I got hired as a job. I took a high school job in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. At my old high school, I dropped out on high school dropout, and I'm going to job. I took a head job at Simon Grass High School, the high school I dropped out of. And one of the first things I knew I was going to do, I was going to go into that basement and I was going to rearrange and do the weight room. <laughs> so my first task, um, uh, 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 my 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 uh, AD Leonard Poole was my strength coach, was my head football coach when I was playing there, and I uh, just kept telling him how persistent that was like, at, at coming to him, bothering about, hey, I need this, I need this equipment. Going over to LaSalle, they're throwing out equipment. I'm taking the equipment they're throwing out, going home, fixing it up. You know, we didn't have a maintenance plan. You know, I do all, you know, you do yeah. all the grunt work yourself. So learn how to, you know, take apart some treadmills and put them back together, oil them up, get the bands working, uh, tighten up some bolts someplace and make it work, get some spray paint. That's awesome. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, put that way together, Simon Gratz, and then, uh, from there, um, just doing stuff in the city, being involved in, you know, I uh, had the first ever uh, Philadelphia Public League strength ignition competition between all the public schools, um, which uh, my school won, by the way, first year they had it. So I'm congrats when we had some big kids and get some work out, get some work done. Um, uh, I had a, 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 the, the, the AD um, from Chain University was just at one of the companies. His, his nephew was one of my student athletes, Dominique Curry. Went up, played, went up, went on to play in National Football League for four years uh, with the St. Louis Rams. I'm yeah. Kurt. Um, was there, Patrick Simon, you know, and actually now I get a phone call said, hey, I would you, you know, to come to, to Cheney and take a look at things. So I'm thinking, well, let's take a look around and see what's going on. So doing a tour, you know, ended up offering me a job to be the director of the Commission at Cheney University. Never had one there. I was the first one they had on campus. And, uh, and that was my first head job, you know, it was 2005 at, uh, um, at Chain University as a director of strength and conditioning for, we had about, I think, nine, nine sports, you know, competing yeah. Bloomberg, Westchester, uh, Clarion, you know, uh, Lock Haven. And, uh, I was, I was sold in, I was, I was, I was loving it. And I had a great connection with, uh, with Penn State with, uh, with Jerry Roberts, who's now the head strength coach at, uh, Temple. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and John Thomas kept in contact with those guys. Just kept, just kept learning, going to visit them, going out to the old. Um, uh, I remember, I can't remember. Junior had a strength and conditioning. Oh uh, yeah, Doug Smith. Yeah, 
was one I've been to, you know, to get out with those guys and just learn and go to clinics and, you know, sometimes being the only, you know, you know, African American male there just I was fired up for it. Like, you know, <laughs> Once again, just being exposed to different ways of training, different ways of coaching, right. different ways of mentoring people, and it's just, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it becomes like a, an addiction. Just wanting to learn something new. You know, someone got come ask me a question, I don't have an answer for it. I gotta go figure it out. I want right. to not just read about it. I want to go actually physically do it. Uh, you know, um, and from there, you know, went went down to Melbourne High School uh, in Florida in, in in the Space Coast and. And uh, now that was a bigger step up from Cheney because I was dealing with 22 high school varsity sports from rowing to golf to tennis. To, you know, now I'm exposed to, to everything. So now I got to learn more. Right. You know, female athletes in a different in a, in a different uh, um, uh, aspect of uh, a sports besides coming away from football and basketball, which I was really dove into. And then uh, went up. I took some kids. I drove my I drove four kids from from Florida up to Penn State for a Penn State football camp. And uh, John Thomas had a spot in the weight room. You know, I didn't say anything to him about it. I heard him talking about it. We just kicking back, reminiscing, talking. So I'm driving back, and I get a call from Joe. <laughs> Joe said, hey, you know, what, JC has a spot in the weight room. You know, what would you be interested in doing? I said, no doubt about it. I didn't talk to my wife yet. <laughs> or fact, my wife said, hey, we moved back to Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it took a little bit of time, but then I got in and um, uh, I worked out great with at Penn State from 09 to 12. Um, great times there, you know, and I was able to, you know, to be with my coaches, uh, not just as a, you know, uh, as a player, but able to do some things, being a full player, you know, I got blessed to do certain uh, tasks and do with Joe, you know, I got to travel, something i never done with GA before. Um, uh, and then I was there for the end when all the stuff went down, which was uh, right. was tough for everybody, you know, sure. watching some of my, 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 my close family members and, and mentors, you know, uh, walk around the building sad, distraught, sad, you know, crying. And I was asked, okay, guess we need you to, you know, to step in and take over the role in the weight room until we figure out what's going to happen there. You know, JT was, you know, went through his deal and that was tough and I didn't like what happened. I didn't like how it went down, you know. I understand the business was still frustrated about, you know, the relationship that was already built, you know, watch it happen to someone like that. And then JT and Jeremy, you know, well, they, mean a, they mean a lot to me now, you know, sure. just watch. I mean, I, I, was, I, was, I was upset, you know, and uh, um, I didn't stick around for that. I took off. Like, I got out of here. Just stuff, you know, just, but I had some stuff going on prior to that going down, you know, just right. meeting with certain schools and have some things coming up, uh, different opportunities. And, uh, and I jumped on one down at Clark Lane University. Um, right. another situation where I was able to come in, Lord always used me in that situation to come in and build something up. Every place I go to, the Lord has used me to try to, to, to lay it, to put the, the shovel on the ground and, and start it up. So, you know, I went down to Clark Atlanta and, and that was that true. Those guys blessed my life completely because I was coming to a situation where, um, it was a, a strength program that wasn't really established, wasn't that much going on. Another rearrangement, another cleaning up going on, another clean up job. And, Equipment, equipment got dealing with stuff with no budget and, and man, learn how to, I've been in some places around me, learn how to use, learn how to budget and learn how to plan and order equipment, be creative and know how to make up, you know, make up the music equipment you have and to still get the same <laughs> results you want to get in the field, you know, with the, the, the big time school. So that was a blessing. And, uh, you know, stepped out on faith, went on to Clark Atlanta, you know, I tell, I tell all my answers the story. I worked at Clark Atlanta for free from, from January to August. You know, the entire time they're working for free, grinding. My, my family was there, had some money from me. Uh, uh, we were doing at Penn State, still there, and my wife was working, and she stepped in huge again and helped out. And next year, you know, uh, you know, they, 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 they ended up paying me. I was told one number, and I was told 50, and I'm getting 35. So, you know, how that goes. Oh, yeah. Family of five, everybody of five, so you know what? It's fine. It's a blessing. The Lord has a plan. You know, they just kept saying, well, next you know, here we are in, in November. They fired the whole staff and kept me. Um, talked to the AD, asked her why, why me, and she, you know, she just said, you know, um, you know, the way you handled yourself, the things you were doing, I watched everything you were doing, to all, you know, with, with your little, with your little weight room area, you completely changed the program, and now it's the interim head football coach. Right. <laughs> so we're working for the interim head football coach, and then, <laughs> like, man, I just want to do strength. That's all I want to do. Well, I need you to hold it down to hire a head football, hire a head football coach, and at that time, JT had already got hired at Georgia. Right. 
I would always go to see JT every every summer. We still hang out with JT, hang out with Joe T. We would talk, we would talk MMA, we would talk boxing. That was, you know, that was my background in boxing, and how do you incorporate that into you know what they're doing on the football field with eye and hand coordination, just movement, and and uh, you know just getting some of the big guys to burn some extra calories, and you know, and, and, and not and do it the proper way, not just starve themselves, or dehydrate themselves. And uh, so I go back to Clark Lake. Right? Next, I'm sitting in church one Sunday morning. I get a phone call from a. Uh, um, uh, uh, a 404 number. Uh, and I never answered my phone in church. Answer the phone. It was uh, Joe T from University of Georgia. Said, "Hey Gus, <laughs> what's up, coach?" He said, uh, "We have a spot here open up, and we're gonna bring you up here for it. You know, we gotta go for the interview process, but you know, pretty much a spot." Yeah, and I was like, "I'm in church." I'm like, "All right." I said, "No, I got." So I go back and I said, "Kelly, your mom, your wife." <laughs> hey, Kel, I just got off a job at University of Georgia. She's like, "What?" <laughs> So, and now I ended up at Georgia two years, um, working under Joe T and working with John Thomas, um, uh, side by side with JT and, um, went through two years of coaching changes there, you know, those, you know, and, uh, I appreciate you always reaching out to us during that time, those two years. And you, you, you were one of the many, that just, you, you were one of the few that just kept always contact with writing us and, and tell us to hang in there. And that was, that was huge, you know, you know, to have that appreciate type of support, that. you know, that was big. Um, uh, and this past year, and, and uh, almost yeah, a year ago today, we're in Georgia. We're trying to figure out what's going on, not going on. And I was blessed to travel to Ohio State to uh, meet with Mickey, go to meet with Rick Court at, uh, in Maryland, go out there with Rutgers, and you just people flying me in, talking to me. And in every place I went, I said, hey, if I, you know, I'm all in, but, you know, you got another spot for JT. That was like, <laughs> so I wasn't going to leave him around, so you got another spot for JT. You know, and that was always the case was going on. And, Coach, it was December 23rd. Uh, I just got back from, uh, I think it was Rutgers. I got back from me with Kenny Parker. I got back from Rutgers. Um, my wife is in on me. I get a call from Mark Rick in the parking lot. Called me and said, what's up, Coach? And I said, hey, you know, I want you to bring in Miami. I said, whatever you want me to do, I'm, I'm all in. I, didn't, I, didn't, I had no idea what the job title was, what he was looking for. And so I want you to run my shrimp program. I said, Coach, that's a done deal. You got it. And then uh, it's been a blessing, complete blessing being able to coach this past year. Man, it's awesome. Well, and, uh, you know, it's even, I mean, I've known you for quite some time now, and I didn't even know all those stops, you know. And I think that it's, it's so important to, to to talk about that journey uh, for all the coaches that are listening because it is, it's not an overnight deal. You don't show up to the University of Miami and all of a sudden be the head strength coach. I mean, it just doesn't happen that way. And so many coaches think that. But oh, man. I do my interns all the time. They just think that, hey, I'm going to go from from being an intern here. I'm going to be the next head strength coach or assistant coach at Michigan. No, buddy, you gotta. That's a lot to be learned during that process. You, you know, you know, and everything I've done those small schools, those high schools, have completely prepared me for what I'm doing right now in this land. That's um, exactly right. It's, it, and it's a blessing to have those stops that in, in, in our path. Well, I think that that's the thing that gets missed. I mean, I think you know, just digging into your story a little bit. I mean, one. Every one of those stops, you, you made the big time where you were at. You didn't think about the next opportunity. You went in and just saw a task and a job that needed to be done, and you did it. You know, and you focused on the kids so much so that you're you're driving kids to Penn State, or you're you're or you're doing different things that you know that that in a way that the, the AD at Clark Atlanta you know sees it and says, let's make you the interim football coach. I mean, you made the big time where you're at. And you focused on the right things, and it led to opportunities. You know, you also. You know, you talked about, you know, going through and, and, you know, having questions thrown at you, things that you weren't necessarily prepared for. And then you went out and you found the answers. You went and found the experts and you said, okay, what would you do, you know, John Thomas? What would you do, you know, uh, Buddy Morris? And and you constantly leveraged your network of people that you worked with um, or played for to continue to better yourself. And I think that's, you know, again, as young coaches so many times, we think that we have all the answers and we're really just starting to ask the right questions, you know? And so, um, and then, I mean, I think there's one other thing that I, I took out of there that I really like, and especially all these high school coaches that are listening right now that don't have staffs. I think using players as interns is a great way to kind of create leadership within your program. I mean, by you going out and, and, and being in an intern type of role, it puts you automatically in a kind of a leadership type of role on the field, you know? And, and I think that was so important, but you know, the one thing that I really want to focus on that I really pulled from your story is, is I mean, I, I, I consider JT a mentor, and I never worked for him. You, you got, you had, you know, you played for him, you coached with him, 
you've been at multiple places with him, and all of a sudden now he's on your staff as an assistant. And there's a lot of people out there that 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 they're threatened by that. You know, they they would they would be so far that would be the furthest thing that they would ever try to do. And you've got so much respect for him. One, two, uh, you see the value in having such a, a fantastic mind on your staff. Talk a little bit about that dynamic. Why you know I, I've done that. I've hired a former boss as a as, as a staff member before. It's not easy. It's kind of weird if you make it weird, but if you don't make it weird, it's freaking the best thing ever. Yeah, and right now, that's the best thing ever. I mean, back in my days when I was at Simon Grass High School, I would, uh, you know, sometimes when you were a senior, you leave, you try to call your coaches back and go and pitch there. Everybody's too busy for you now, you yeah. know. But JT, he always answered my calls. He always returned my phone calls. He always, and then even him at Georgia, in role at Georgia, getting to some uh, Olympic movements and something like that, something he wasn't familiar with, he would reach out to me. I would write it up for him sitting out there. We always kept in touch back and forth. When I was at Clark Atlanta, he was still out in uh, Penn State after all the thing, and he said, hey, you know, just we, we always kind of kept in touch. It's not, it's more than just a, a, a player coach or or, or a, a boss, you know, employee relationship. That's family. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that, that night I had my house fire, house fire in, uh, in Georgia, JT out of his bed, the first one, the first one there. You know, and, and it's so good. My, my kids, Look up, they love JT. My, you know, I still get phone calls from my teammates. I'm like, how many JTs out? They're so tight and nervous. Like, I said, yo, JT, he's a cool guy. But like you said before, you mentioned about having that, that type of knowledge and, and brain on your side. I don't know everything. He knows things and things that I haven't been through yet. Right. And, and I'm constantly, like, all, every, one of my, every one of my staff members brings something to the table that we have to have. I can't have a bunch of gut when running around the weight room. We get nothing done. You know, I heard you say before, a lot of people say that. And we really truly have that dynamic at University of Miami. JT, is, is 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 a mentor to many. I remember back in the day coming to the clinics room and watching everyone that goes on the stage mention and reference JT. You know, and, and, and then sitting down with him, all the people that come up and talk to him and get his autographs and talk to him. I'm like, this is crazy. You know, I was a bodyguard. <laughs> you know. So this past year, he made a bunch of jokes. Hey, look at you guys. Like, he got in the corner. Everyone come talk to me. After this. <laughs> it's, but it's, it's great, and, and not just JT. That you know, JT. Uh, is huge for a lot of us, you know. You, I can just name schools that you know, Rutgers now, uh, uh, Temple was well, gonna be Bell, now everybody knows what's going on, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> with that every sky. Um, uh, uh, Stony Brook, uh, you know, Princeton, uh, yeah, you know, Toledo, all these guys have, have all come from other JC's tutelage, you know, he's all giving us, he's, he's giving us all a shot to be ourselves as a strength coach, you know, a lot of guys like the micromanage JT allow us has allowed us to coach, allowed us to develop. He, and even back in Israel at Penn State, he would have meetings where he would, you know, he would want our input. He, he would definitely use, he uses, you know, I was great with computer, I was great in technology. So Gus, here you go, Gus, and you put this together for him, you know, and then it, 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 and he found ways to incorporate us and bring out our strengths. Right. You know? And that's the same thing we have here now. Well, I'm sorry about that. And like, you know, like JT it has headed up our injury, our injury rehab program, current return to play program, where anyone is getting, they're getting tra- trained and coached up just as hard and, and with so much intensity than they would if they weren't injured. Right. You know, I just throw away. You know, they're, they're they, they, you know, and, and that dynamic we have going on, work with with the medical with the medical staff and JT. Uh, people going out there and paying guys millions of dollars, to bring in these, you know, these scientists and all the specialists to come get on. We have JT here to get that done, and we're doing a great job. And now guys come back. We had one of our freshman line, All-American linebackers work with JT the whole season long dealing with his little injuries, and, and he's playing ball great, not missing a beat, you know, just, just because of things, because them wanting to work hard, and plus JT's knowledge and, 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 uh, and um, toolage getting them ready to go. Right. So that, 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 that relationship is, is great. Like I said before, when I was going around and meeting with all those schools um, to interview people trying to get a job, I, you can talk to Rick Court, you can talk to uh, – um, uh, Kenny Parker, first thing I said, hey, do you have a spot for JT? And they were like, man, I can't offer JT a job. That would that, be embarrassing. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But no, JT just wants to work. He's a, he's a strength coach. Yeah. He's a strength coach. He wants, to, he wants to impact and mold lives. The guys on the team call him Pops. They love him. You know, I'm like, look, you guys are special because guess what? You got a chance to go through something I went through. You know, you, you got a chance to train one of the best around. And, and, and not just that, just one of the great, great people. So right. and and I was you know I was I was a little you know sometimes a little not worried I always had to pray about the Lord but I, was, I had a little you weren't you know what's what it's gonna be like you know the role switching and 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 and, and you know it just completely flipping around you know but he's been great with it he's been even better he's helped me through it. it's like guys you need me to do something you got that you got you know you got to tell me you know I wouldn't go through something because it's JT that's right. You know? 
I'm not gonna have you so like you know, but he's in. If I'm in the morning, I would have cleaned the weight room at a celebration. He's right there with me, mom with the floors, helping out. You know, diving, sold in. You know, and and, and it's more him than us because he accepted the role, he embraced it, and we embraced it to make it so much easier. And that's why, that's why we call him JT the Legend because of things like that. You know, I hope and pray someday one of my young guys will hire me and bring me with him, so you know, so I can play my role. Okay. And JT's a team player. That's what makes it so much easier, you know. And, and he come, hey, Gus, what do you think about this? Can we do this? And, um, you know, sometimes like, JT, man, you do your thing, man. You got to ask me. And he said, no, I got to. You know, and just this, his professionalism and knowledge in the game has is, is, is been huge. And, and it's been that major relationship, what it is now, and how we get it done because of him just just being JT. And he's one of the best around. And, and people want to, you know, give him a rag for, you know, how I, I played injury-free. For a long time doing high intensity training, and, and and we have some 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 aspects of it, and, and what we're doing here, you know, it's not you know, because it works. I'm not gonna, you know, you know, you, you know, you already know what it's like. Um, but his, his his knowledge and what he brings to the table has been outstanding. It's been great. Um, now we have a a, a great internship program uh, going on because of him being around and him and uh, uh, Victor Ishmael, another another veteran guy, I've been there for sixteen years as well. Miami been there. He coaching the guys I played with. So right. you know, I got two, I got two very very knowledgeable, you know, veterans in the game on my staff, making us. You know, just just we're still building. You know, we like last season we laid the foundation. Now we're starting to build blocks up to hold it together. Awesome. And I got two of those guys on my staff that just makes it great. You know, well, I think that that's so important. Again, I mean, it's it's not the norm. You know, for for you know guys that are getting their their first big opportunity per se to hire people that are more experienced than them. It's again maturity wise. You know, it's something that I you know I had a hard time with early on. I mean, I wouldn't have done that. I, the, the way that I've always looked at it though is is um, to try to empower the people that work with you, um, you know, because a rising tide raises all ships, right? You know, oh, yeah. and, and then, yeah. uh, you know, I think about what you're going through and how, you know, how you've done it. And, you know, I think about it just as an aging strength coach, you know, the, the people that you see on the way up are often the, the same people you see on the way back down too, you know. And so you got to make sure that you're, you're treating everybody right uh, and yeah. doing it in a way. And, and I mean, I think that has happened naturally. What I, What's really cool is just to see the, the respect level um, right. that you have and, and, and he has, you know, back, yes. but I think, um, all the time, but you know, just, you know, you remind me, Gus, you're proud of you. Just keep it going. You know, making Joe proud, making your mom proud, making us proud. Awesome. Like even my mother passed away. My mother passed away in 2011. He was the first, very much the only coach show up at the hospital, wow. you know, and, and, and that, that's big to me, you know? Right. Yeah. So just those things like that would never get overlooked for me and JT. And this is my guy. We're constantly, you know, kicking ideas over each other. We're constantly, you know, programming and thinking, you know, I, I'll, I'll write the program out, you know, base program out, and I'll give it to him and let him make any changes he got to make for the injury guys he got there with type of injury, you know, ice and torso workout or anything. Well, you know, anything we got going on is going back and forth, constantly back and forth, and, and I love the relationship that we have. But we can just constantly, we know, he knows what I'm thinking, I know what he's thinking, and, and it's been, you know, a lot of people say, man, you know, we're being, you know, tag with JT. I said, no, I, I, I'm, I, I, it's an honor to be that, be that. You know what I'm saying? To be, to be labeled, you know, with him because I know what we do. You know, you know, we're not high intensity, but we get, we do have some aspects in our program that that, that we need to have to get the best out of these kids. And like, you know, you know, and, and that's how it works. But he's, it's, it's been a great relationship because of him, uh, his family. You know, and just, it's just, you know, it's just been, it's just been awesome. You know, it's been more than what I expected, what I thought going into it, and I'm, I'm blessed to have it. That's great, man. You talked about the variety in training. I mean, you go from high intensity back, you know, shoot JT back in the day was pure high intensity. Now probably a hybrid, you know, Buddy Morris is completely on the other end of the spectrum, you know, and, and every time I, I turn on Instagram or, or social media, I see you at a yoga class or, or a, a CrossFit gym or, you know, a bunch of different types of training. You, you've incorporated a lot. Talk a little bit about you know, what this quest for knowledge has been and this quest to kind of challenge yourself and your ideals? It's more. It's like, I, first of all, I want to know what it is. If I get asked a question, I don't know. I got I got to figure it out. You're not going to sit here and just ask me a question I can't answer. I'm even going to dive into it. And and without actually doing it. I'm a big guy. I love to show off my abilities, my flexibility, my mobility, my strength. I love to see it. You know, I love to try to show it off and do it. And, and there's always something to learn. You know, I got to see if it's going to work for what we're trying to get done. I meet with my head coaches and my coaching staff. We meet a lot. I want to know, you know, what are their goals? What are we trying to get done? How can we get there? What's the best ways to get in there? And now if it works for, with, with, for our student, everybody, 
uh, body is different, or different abilities, or, you know, and, and, and moves and, and, and functions differently, you know, and, and every, every training aspect is not going to work for every student athlete. You know, but, you know, we, we do keep it basic. We don't get too crazy with it. And a lot of times we just do it, just do it for ourselves. My coach said, I've got an idea. We'll go get it done. Um, I like to train. I like to work out. I like to sweat. I like the feeling of it. I like, I like the burn. I like, you know, so there's something out there that uh, I love a practical certification. I love certification that allows you to go out there and actually physically go through the movements, not just, you know, look in a book and go past the test. I want, I, you know, it's, that part is big, but uh, tell my engine, if you can't physically perform the movements, and you don't know if the athlete's going through neurologically and, and mentally and physically doing a, doing a move, doing a lift, then you, it's hard for you to coach someone up. You know, so we have to go out there and physically do it ourselves. I'm, I'm huge in that. We have to be able to perform it. I know at some point it's going to slow down. JT still kicking and rocking. You know, <laughs> JT doing hang cleans. We got JT. People don't believe you got JT doing hang cleans. I sent up to Jeremy, showed Jeremy a video of JT doing a hang clean. We got the group chat going. They go crazy. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, you know, so... <laughs> Uh, that, that it's more so just just to learn. It's nothing, right. you know. It's nothing. We're, not, we're a hybrid system here. Like I said, we're going to do some cleans. We're going to do some, do some, some piles. We're going to do things that our guys right right way. You know, try to reduce it as like as we can. You know, but we want to make it stronger mentally and physically. Um, there's no right. No one's going to reinvent the wheel. But a lot of it just to see what it is, see what's about. People's talking about these fast. So I want to go out and see what's like for myself. You know, that, 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 that's all it boils down to. There's no tricks to it. No, nothing special behind that. I just like to work out and we go jump into it and get it. Well, I think that's the, so important is, is um, knowing before you comment, you know, and being open-minded, you know, and then what you're doing is you're forming what your belief system is about it. You know, whether or not, if you, if you like it, great. If you don't like it, at least you know what you don't like about it. And I think that that's so important. But, well, you know, one thing that I always, you know, respect about you just from watching from afar is it, it seems to me just like, I mean, we've had a, we've had a similar journey in our careers you know, high intensity programs to, and, and traditional programs and this long, very kind of winding trail and, and all these things. But ultimately, it comes down to getting the athletes to buy into you, getting the athletes to buy into your program um, and being at a place like Miami. You're, you're, you're not just having a rally, just the coaches and the athletes like a lot of people are. But that's a, it's a very proud program with an alumni base that's very active and uh, you know, uh, you know, a university that's very active, and you've had to rally a lot of different people uh, in a, in ways. What what have been some of the tactics that you've used to kind of get your teammates, to get your team to, to buy into you, and then you know those alumni to buy into you as well? The biggest thing you know, I just be my, I'm myself. I said I don't try to be anyone. I'm trying to be the best, the best Gus Thug I can be every single day. The best big dog. Everybody know they call me Big Dog. I have the name back from Don Curry way back in Cheney and. Um, nothing to do with Georgia. Everybody has to do with Georgia. <laughs> I didn't mean before that. But um, it's just being me. I, you know, I, I love the Lord. I love to laugh. I love, the, you know, the, when it's time to work, we're going to work. That's the biggest. That's one thing everyone knows. When I uh, I had a chance to meet Ed Reed years ago when I was at Clark Atlanta, you know, working with, through another one of my friends, uh, uh, Frank Walker, who played uh, about 13 years in the league. And him and Ed were friends. He brought Ed over to the workout and, and, and had no idea that, our relationship, my relationship with Ed Reed was gonna bring me to Miami, <laughs> you know. So, well, once I got the, once I found the job, I hit Frank up, I hit Brian Johnson, I hit, I hit Anthony Adams up, all these guys that I played with that had a relationship with somebody from Miami, and then they all got the word out who I was and what was going on. It was it was a done deal, you know. Right. Once they, they figured out who I, they, they knew, they knew what I'm, they know what I'm about. They know I'm a ball player first that that, that loves and blessed me with coaching and strength and conditioning. You know, this is the biggest way you're going to find what type of team you have. A strength coach to shape and, and create the, the, the identity of the football team. Um, we're the lifeline of these guys when they're down, when they're up. These guys come tell us everything. We're their mentors, their fathers, we're their brothers, we're everything. And I, every relationship is different with every single student athlete. You can't coach them all the same. I don't believe that. Um, we all go through the same movement, but they all got different ways of receiving information, retaining information. So I just find that find that connection, and I use it. You know, and the Lord, every book I read. Every verse in the Bible, I've, I've been able to, I've, I've, you know, you, you read something, you you, you you go through something, you buy something, uh, you learn something. It's not always for you. The Lord always goes in your life for you to give it to somebody else. So I look at every experience that I had in my life. Even me, I was, I was a young, my wife and I have been, been together since we were 16 years old. I've uh, been married going on 17 years this year coming up here. And I got a lot of, here in Miami, I got a lot of young men that, has, <laughs> that have young kids. Right. <laughs> so, I'm able to really apply those my, my experiences being a, 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 a young father, uh, apply my experiences being the, the time I had in the National Football League, apply my experiences working on the JT, 
playing the JT, playing for Joe Paterno, playing in, the, in, in a Power 5 conference, playing in big-time games, you know, going through some tough practices, going through a really hard, you know, time when we were down in 2001 to a really sick season, 2002, you know, so uh, all those experiences that the Lord has blessed in my life, I'm able to use right now to each individual kid in their own special way. And um, that's the biggest thing, just being me. I mean, with Wilson McGay, he comes up and work out once a week. He's a big crossfitter. I got a CrossFit certification years ago. I had no idea I was going to do with it, but now here I am. I can sit here like CrossFit work off of Willis McGay. He loves it. You go, we go get it. Right. You know? <laughs> and I'm just strong in competitions. When I was in Georgia working with Pace Puckett out there uh, at CrossFit Killer Instinct, and now I come here, I'm able to apply his work out with some of the big guys. Brian, uh, Brian McKinney when to come do a powerless, and, you know, I'm going to be able to apply these things and really teach them and coach them up. And those guys love being around. I love the players seeing them around because they have, they have that Miami experience. And that, that 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 tradition that I don't have, and right. just you know, just our guys seeing those guys around and working those guys around, they're fired up. I love it when we have optional workouts, and our guys don't want to leave the weight room. You know, that, that that's a great thing as a strength coach. You know, you know, you've been in some places you open optional workout, no one show up. Right. You sitting there for a day for two kickers to come through. You know, nothing wrong with kickers coming through, but you sit there all day. <laughs> but here in Miami, man, it's always kids rolling in, alumni rolling in, and, and it's a great feeling this past year. And I just want to continue to add on that. Build on it. They had, and the one thing I learned about the alumni is that they're loyal to the U. Right. So loyal to Swayze, and Swayze, well, he did, he did something great. He was at one school for a long period of time. He has, he put some great kids out in that football. He built some great people up. And uh, and once they realized that, you know, I'm all about all that thing, those guys love coming around, and it's, it's been it's been great. You know, and that's the big. It's been myself. That's all it boils down to. Part of yourself that you know it, it doesn't take long for people to know about you. Is your, your faith's important to you, just like it is with me. You know, how have you been able to be a strong man of faith um, and be a coach, especially in a in a, in a just an ego dominant, you know, tough man. You know, tough is you're, you're not tough unless you're cussing a kid out type mm-hmm. of culture. You know what? Well, how have you been able to just kind of be so open? Man, I learned a long time that the Lord gets a platform to bring people close to his kingdom. You look at all the disciples. The disciples were, were were strong men. They were going to areas knowing they were probably killed, you know, you know, uh, 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 locked up or something. They just kept fighting and kept fighting to face certain you know, son of the Lord. And, you know, a Christian man to me is one of the toughest people you can come across because they been, they, they know they go into a situation knowing they can possibly kill. You know, look at Paul, Apostle Paul, knowing he's going to get arrested just by sharing the gospel. That's why this piece that I'm like right now is Philippians 4.13. Everything is a big weight play, but no. Philippians 4.13, I do all things to Christ and strengthen me. Go back to this order from, from the Apostle Paul, and it goes back to Philippians 4.12. You know, talk about, he's talking about how he's been brought low, how he's been brought down, how he's been locked up and starved, but through the strength of Christ, he can get everything done. You do all things through Christ and strengthen us. To go to look at four thirteen and 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 like you know just just going back to repeat myself again like those Christians are some of the toughest people they go into areas knowing they're going to be locked up knowing they're going to try someone's going to try to kill them knowing they're going to be beat but they went through fighting hard selling and promoting all that Christ has done for them and all those apostles that, that the Lord has used were once people who weren't. Christians who did some really rough things and bad things and look at my life where I come from and everything he has blessed us with, everything he has blessed me with, every talent, every person I meet, he's always shown provision to the people who place in my life. JT, you, I talk about, I talk about you, how you impacted me. Um, uh, 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 Jeff Madden, you know, I can talk about all of you. I can see John, uh, my man, I can't leave him out. I got to talk about is, is Jeremy Scott, huge, 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 huge mentor for me. Bigger than anyone would have imagined when it comes to learn how to program, learn how to put things together, learn how, you know, really big for me. I love that guy to death, especially working with NFL athletes. And Jeremy Scott has done some great things. He's, he's a quiet, humble guy. Um, him and I would get in trouble together at Penn State for doing a little bit of in the JC weight room, but we <laughs> <laughs> we were just hit it hard and laugh about it, you know. And uh, those guys, like I said, that that tree of that that, that tree of coaches that JC has created, man, in his in his profession, has been awesome. But anything I'm dealing with with these athletes, man, the Lord has given me an answer through that Bible. I can always find an answer in the Bible. I get it in my Bible every day. I do the proverb challenge every single day. I mean, I just read one proverb every day. I do it over and over again, over and over again. And it's amazing how the Lord works. I always find. Find one one of the proverbs in those proverbs that relates to what I'm dealing with that day. Mm-hmm. I love that, you know. Um, and I use my platform, my, my social media platform. I'm going to share the love of the Lord all day long because He has given me an opportunity. He has blessed me to be in here in Miami. He has used me in provision for people. He's, people in my life in provision. Um, he's always a firm provision, no matter what we're dealing with. You know, my faith is completely in Him. I'm not, you know, I'm I'm blessed. Everything He's put, everything I'm doing right now, everything I'm doing right now. 
is going to set me up for what he has for me in the future. This video is going to bless somebody, and that's all I can ask for, you know. And, and it's just like you, when I was at Clark Atlanta, you know, Devin Steele is one of the guys you had, and, and you would always write me back in comment. I'm like, I'm getting fired up. I'm like, look, man, look, look who's writing me back. I'm going to show everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about how I know how you follow me, so I've been following you, and, and just going back, watching your videos on YouTube, and I'm going to show them, look who's writing me back, man. So I know we get some people get, we're on the right track, you know. That's awesome. That, you know, that's great. You know, those things, like, you know, and, and I'll see the clinics, and I want to go over and buy it. You know what? Sure, I'm going to go talk to them. I'm going to go over and talk, and you've blessed my life since, man. You've been great, very, very open to answer questions and talk. And I'm really, like I said, I, I know the Lord is going to use it. He has used me. I, I love the small school setting. I love the high school setting. I was once there. I was that guy. I went from Gus Feller, the football player, where everyone wants to talk to you, to Gus Feller, the small school strength coach, and no one wants to let you in. Right. And now I'm back here in Miami where everybody wants to talk to you and come see you. Right. Yeah. My door is up to any high school coach, any any small school that want to come see what we're doing, want to talk to me. You can you you'll probably get messages. They'll, they'll probably comment. They'll tell you, you walk in my place, you will not leave without sitting down with us and talking and getting everything you leave can before you leave out of it. Because I've been on that side where I'm kind of knocking on the door. Uh, I, I answer comments. People want to ask me a question. I try my hardest to write back when I got time. Um, I want to. I, I don't want to leave any stone unturned. I want to give every young strength coach who really wants to be a strength coach an opportunity. If I can bust them anywhere I can bust them um, in this field, I, I want to do that because the Lord has given this platform to do that, and I'm going to use it best I can. That's awesome, man. Well, Bud, I know you got to get going. You're, you're you're shooting game prep right now, but I have uh, you know yeah. a couple of questions just to kind of yeah. before we let you go. Just quick answers here. Give us yeah. a give us the biggest mistake you ever made and kind of how you learned from it. The biggest thing I ever learned I ever done was not using my staff early on in a small school. I tried to do everything myself, and I burned myself out um, being away from my home, home too long. And you, if you got staff members out there, use them. They're there yeah. for a reason. Find something they're great at and use it. Um, me trying to be, you know, how we're, we're egos. Oh, I can get it done. I can do it. Oh, you go home. I do it myself. I'm burning myself out. My wife being upset with me trying to understand, but <laughs> – Okay. You use the help that the Lord provides for you. Use them. They all have ability. They all have talent. Don't. Because two things are going to happen. One, you're going to burn yourself out. And two, you're going to push a good person away because yeah. they're not being used. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. What about the best piece of coaching advice you ever received? When you work hard, great things will happen. George Curry, my high school football coach, and uh, and that's been my motto. You will not outwork me. Um, and, I, and not knocking your abilities or your talents. That's just what I believe in. You, uh, you give me a task, I'm going to do everything I have my ability and my power to get it done the best possible. What about a uh, book, app, and website recommendation? Book that I just found reading called The Sender. Doc and Kevin Elko was one of my team. Doc is here in Miami uh, when I was at the Cleveland Browns. The Sender It's a great book. about. Uh, I don't want to give it up, but just check it out. Read it. That book will bless you no matter what you're doing. Uh, it, if you if it won't bless you, it'll teach you to bless somebody else when it comes to dealing with somebody. We deal with athletes that have different issues and problems every day. Find a way to motivate and get them out of what they're dealing with and focus on. Uh, 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 not focus on the bad, focus on what, what, what's happening in that situation, make the best out of it. The sender, check it out. Awesome. Uh, app and a website? Favorite app would be uh, is, is, is Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I serve the Lord with Instagram all the way around everything I do. I, see people, I, I, I post through you Instagram. You might be the first person to ever say I serve the Lord through, through Instagram, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yep. Yeah, um, and awesome. my favorite website, you know, people don't know this about me, but uh, I'm a big time gamer. So, you know, anything with ING, I love video games. And I'm, man, now the secret's out. You know, I'm a big time gamer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it, only, it only goes out to about 12,000 people. Don't worry about it. Yeah, well, good. They can join me sometime. I love video <laughs> games, man. And that's what I do with my downtime, man. That's, you gotta, <laughs> you, hey. You gotta have a release, man. You gotta have a release. Out of my motorcycle, but the video game is my deal. So, ing.com, get all the gaming information news you probably want. <laughs> what's coming out? What's happening? That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, buddy, this has been fun, man. And and like I said at the beginning, you're a guy that I respect. You're a guy that's doing it the right way. Um, love hearing more about your journey. Just getting to know you better myself, even. And and uh, really, truly appreciate the way that you're going about your business, man. Man, it's an honor. It's a blessing for you to call me and uh, be doing this FaceTime video, this uh, Skype video with you. Um, I always follow what you're doing. I love reading your book. Your book is a special. Your book is special to me because it lays out what you need to get done as a profession. And, and every intern that comes through my program that does a great job is trying to get it, that really wants to do this. I, that's a, I bless them with that at the end. So you see me buying all these books. I'm not reselling them. Getting off my <laughs> intern. 
<laughs> so, but I really appreciate it, and uh, and, I, and I truly admire and love like guys that are true to the profession, true to being strength coaches, and and it's a blessing to find many of them to follow guys like yourself. So I appreciate you. That's it for this episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk. Thanks to this week's guest as well as our sponsors for bringing this episode to you for free. Make sure to check out ronmckeefree.com where you can join our mailing list, find the show notes, including all the links and resources mentioned, and information about Coach McKeefree's other products. While you are there, please join Coach McKeefree in the comments section thanking our guest for sharing. If you haven't subscribed to Iron Game Chalk Talk on YouTube or iTunes yet, make sure to do so. Comments, ratings, and reviews are always welcome. Coach McKeefree can be found on Twitter at rmckeefree on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash Ron dot McKeefrey. That's it for this week. Be sure to check back next week for another great episode of Iron Game Shop Talk.